just gonna come out and say fuck 2020 right up front <laughs> and that's where that's where we're gonna start right there well the good news is it's half over is it though oh no nah, i mean almost I, is it though because because like i don't know maybe it'll fucking last until like next february or <laughs> next august like we don't know who the fuck knows <laughs> Have you seen the meme where they're like looking and it's like 11.59 on December 31st and then it like clicks over but it's like it just like 11 is they like, 11.60? Yeah, it's like 11.60 and you're like, what? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Here we are. This is me just like floating along being like, gotta keep going. Ugh. <sighs> I, like here's the deal it'll end at some point and that's just the nature of the universe so that's not so, helpful now no not at all not at all and and hopefully when it does end we'll have some time to like reflect before it ends and it's not just like oh immediate and then we're, it's over right you know i read something terrifying the other day about oh i can't remember what, the, what it was called Unstable vacuum was the general concept that the universe is not actually a stable vacuum. Oh. So think of it like being in a valley and the bottom is the absolute bottom, but we're on like a lip. So if we were to fall, everything <laughs> would reorient itself and we, it would happen so quickly. 20, um, 20. Like the speed of occurrence. Well, it wouldn't matter. We wouldn't even know what's happening. We wouldn't even know. And we would just be. Yeah. Going. Yeah. So. Well, that's how you want it to happen, right? You want it to just be like the universe blinking and you're just done. Oh, what a what a phrase! The universe blinking. Wow. The universe so, blinking. That's what you keep me around for. <laughs> the universe blinking is my new post rock band. <laughs> yeah, I would buy an album just to put it on the wall with that. Name. Lots of <laughs> really, blinking. lots of really long instrumental things with occasional samples of found audio from like, uh, like Sputnik. <laughs> Yeah, that that, but like that mixed in with like with like uh, protesters and like people uh, speaking at protests, but like the audio is really slowed down. Mm. That's that's my universe blinking debut album right there. I'm googling how often did Sputnik beep. <laughs> I I just I rec I used Sputnik as an example because we watched um, October Skies the other night. Because my partner had never seen it. Oh, I haven't watched that in a while. Jake John Hall vehicle, <laughs> Laura Dern. It's good. <laughs> um. So I feel like I should say like what we do here. Sure. This is it. This is the thing. Sometimes there's a topic, and we make a hat tip effort to talk about the topic we know nothing about. But generally, we just bullshit for the duration, and uh, uh, sometimes, incidentally stumble into the topic more often than not we acknowledge that the topic has been stated and we don't know what it is <laughs> at least as of late that's been the standard who knows that's because there's 2020 full of surprises maybe today yeah. we'll spend the entire episode talking about the topic you might know this maybe the universe will blink i don't i didn't know what it meant i had seen yeah. it before but i had to look it up so okay when that happens that goes it goes on the list of binary jazz topics <laughs> I had something like that come up too in the last week, but then I forgot what it was. So I almost had a topic, but now I don't. That Ooh, Chris, also you happens. Something crazy? Is that... something mm -hmm. crazy. Before the topic is announced, yes. maybe we should guess as to what it is. No. Kind of dinosaur. <laughs> okay, and the topic is? <laughs> Wait, what did you guess? Kind of a kind dinosaur. Kind of dinosaur. Oh. I feel like I, I would know that one. Uh, Do you think I'm just I over here reading about dinosaurs without knowing? 
types of dinosaurs. <laughs> the Utah um, raptor is a uh, type of dinosaur. It's related, I believe, to the Allosaurus, and uh, it was discovered in Utah. Gas. Yeah. Actually, no, it's not. It's not. It's not related to the Allosaurus. Allosaurus was discovered in Utah. That's a different dinosaur. Utah raptor is, I think, like a. Um, I can't remember what a Utah raptor is, but anyway, it was discovered by a kid. It was it was, na- it was it was like named by a kid. It was named by like a sixth grader or something. Yeah, famously found in Toronto. So that's weird. No, <laughs> it was found Only in Utah. the champions. Yeah. I was thinking the kid's name was Utah. I no. Okay. It was found, I believe, in um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Escalante, uh, Grand Staircase Escalante, which is a national monument that uh was part of the land tear it down that, yeah Sorry. part of the land that was awarded that was made into a national mon- monument by obama mm-hmm. that was then uh pulled back by donald trump god fuck that guy mm-hmm. yeah i got a letter i feel like that's an me. area oh got a letter is that him? is that not yeah. fantastic yeah i'm on a mailing list too two weeks two weeks after i got my um i guess covid oh stipend they were like hey just let you know you're gonna get a covid stipend and i was like this was this would have been useful to a company with the actual money i got yeah yeah i I got um, that i got that like a week after i had gotten (laughs) did you get a physical check or did you get like a uh like a debit card i got like an actual check okay i got it yeah well this is great this is a this is a wonderful example at how efficient this entire program happened. Chris, direct deposit. Allison, print a check. I got a debit card that I could only withdraw like X amount of dollars per day. Really? I had to do it over the course of like two weeks to get all of the money out into an actual account I could use. That's so weird. I didn't even know that was an option. I know like I I got, like I don't have direct deposit as an option because I don't have a US bank account. So like the check made sense. Um, But Wow. I actually do I have didn't... a US bank account, but uh, apparently it was not just apparently not acceptable. broken, Gary. <laughs> apparently my outspokenness has been uh, yeah. I said something yeah. about this... it. Oh man, I don't I don't want to get into it. What's the topic today? <laughs> it's this podcast. The uh, topic for today is anodyne. Anodyne. A N O D Y N E. It's a treatment of metal, right? To give it color, like aluminum. Oh. oh, that's anodizing. No, I don't know what anodyne is. Never mind. I was like, if it is, that's not on my research. But... Yeah. No, no, this is this is how it works. Like you say things confidently. I was yeah. like, wow, a lizard just jumped from one chair to this, like a chair to the screen. It's probably a four foot gap. That was impressive. Little lizard. <laughs> He's doing it just for your respect. <laughs> so I can enjoy the porch, buddy. Um, oh, he sees a hole. Oh. Dang, I'm not even seeing the nature. Here. A-N-O-D-Y-N-E. Can you actually mm-hmm. see the lizard? No, not at all. No, because oh, I can't. Oh, wait, I can't. Now that he's moving. No, up in front of me. Yeah. He's, he's got his eyes on a bug. Episode. We might get to see some natural. Sweet, are there windows or are you just on a porch? I'm on a porch. Okay. Porch. It's not a sunroom. That would be no. ridiculous. No. Okay. Uh, I don't know if that'd be ridiculous. Because. Uh, the neighbors, two houses down at the sunroom, which, I don't know, maybe it is a little ridiculous. I have to apologize for the dog barking. My neighbors have trained their dog to bark, to, bark. to be let back in to the house, but then they do not do anything about it. Uh, it's interesting you should say that, because I don't know that I've ever apologized for the dog barking, so I retroactively <laughs> apologize for <laughs> dog barking and squeaky doors and all the other fantastic noises that accompany my presence everywhere I go, it seems. Um, <laughs> Oh, now I could hear. I was going to say, I actually didn't hear the dog, but now look at this yeah. lizard, like up on the screen. Let's see. Do you see it? No. I uh, see nothing. I see, uh, I see a spot on the wall. Is that your lizard? Uh, perhaps. I don't know. It's, I mean, it's like a four inch thing with a tail, and I'm, I have the laptop, I don't know, eight, six feet away. So, yeah, I'm surprised that it doesn't come through very well. Anodyne. Anodyne. Right? But dine is is uh what should you do at dinner? Uh is um dine is like a measure like a uh mechanical measurement thing, right? Is that how we like sure four yeah. dines? Yes. yes, yes and yes and it's yes more. and uh it's also 
uh, refers to uh, property value. Yeah, it's kind of like if you have, you know, four dimes of something, yeah. like handfuls. So it's just like, you got a lot. It's more <laughs> colloquial. <laughs> it's like stone. Like, you know, I weigh four stone or whatever. I don't remember. How much is a stone? It's like 20 pounds or something. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> is that right? I don't know. I, th I thought, I thought, I thought it was like something obscure, like 13 or something it, that's hard probably, to in your head. I mean, that's British. 17 and three eighths. I mean, which, like, what's yeah. funny, which funny is when I, I, when I, I learned about, when I learned about stone, like it being like the existence of that as a measurement uh, was in when I was in England and yeah, it makes no sense to me, but they use, I mean, they, people use it. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's a thing. It's like, I mean, I, as, as obscure and stupid as, as like 12 inches as a foot is like stone is obscure and stupid and it's totally like a valid measurement, even though it makes no sense whatsoever. Is, is it, it, it does make sense. It's as, it's as completely as arbitrary as it's, it's, a it's pound parts. or a kilogram. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so to that end, do people use it like in facetious, sarcastic ways? Like, like, oh, I ate a stone of fish and chips for lunch. Or is that, <laughs> or is that like not a thing? Like I would, but. I, I don't know. I don't really think so. so I'll have to ask my. Uh, only for mother. serious matters. <laughs> Yes. Well, like, like I don't feel like grams is something that's used, you know, sarcastically. I feel like it's a scientific measurement, and so people don't use grams sarcastically. I don't know. If you're use, you're saying like if you're if you're particular enough to be using grams in in the United States, that you're just like you have no sense of humor. <laughs> I don't know that that's what I was trying to say. Uh, you were you're right, Gary. A stone is fourteen pounds. That's easier than thirteen and three eighths or whatever I said. Um, uh, so but, but not by a lot. Katie has taken to when we take our walks after lunch. Yeah, okay. uh, asking me to give her word problems for math. So so you so you could ask her how many stones is she? Uh, I could, and then I could also we yeah, yeah. I, I, the fallout of that is that when I was uh, putting tile down in the bathroom, uh, we were talking about geometry and square feet. And I gave her some measurements, and I realized, oh, that's probably more difficult than she can handle, like based on what she knows. So then I gave her like a simpler number, uh, but then I got the simpler number stuck in my head, and then I bought that amount of tile, which was oh, like no. only half of what I needed. <laughs> so <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> and of course, like it was all curbside pickup, you know. So as soon as I realized I did it, I'm like, oh crap! Like I got home with the first load. And I'm getting it out. And I'm thinking, I'm like, how did I miss? And then I, I started thinking through. I'm like, oh, because I simplified it to make it easier for her. Damn. Um, so then I started to order more tile. And when I started to order more tile, I placed the order and then realized, oh, you know what? If I'm going to order more tile, I'm going to need more of the mud that goes down underneath it to adhere it to the floor. Ugh. Right? So that was a second order. Well, I get an email that the tile is ready. And I hop in the car to go. And I, uh, I'm like, I'm waiting. And I, like every red light, I'm checking to see, like, well, is the mud going to be ready? Like, this is going to be silly if I have to like, come back tomorrow. And by the time I got out to the place, they were already closed for the day anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so it was an absolute comedy of error. It was fantastic. Fantastic. My name is a lot. In case you couldn't hear. Wait a minute. Do you live in the kind of area that you can just wave to people? Apparently. Well, I mean, he's riding by in a mower. I thought that would be rude not to. <laughs> there, there's only yeah. one. There's only yeah. one person I ever wave, wave to uh, mm -hmm. in my neighborhood, and it's the bro who uh, used to live oh, across the street from us, who never wears a shirt. Oh yeah, I remember him. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, I remember you telling about him. Yeah, yeah, he's the only, cause he's the only one that actually like waves to us. And so like, I feel obliged to like, you know, do that hey. and yeah. yeah. And he still uh, doesn't wear a shirt. He's just <laughs> like, I drive by like... and he's still not wearing a shirt. And like, now he's got new neighbors to talk to and, and they can also experience his, his not shirt wearing, but they will miss out on uh, the federal marshals who uh, raided his house. Storming. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, the first apartment Ron and I lived in, we had a neighbor downstairs we called the Shirtless Wonder. He was from New York and always wore like 80s shorts, which are about half as long as shorts should be, um, and no shirt, and just stood on his porch and smoked cigarettes all day. I don't know what scam he was running, but. No, he, he wears shorts that are, um, I would say, modern length. Which is to say, like, men's shorts that, like, at least hit the knee, if not are longer. Which, you know, makes you doubt why they should be called shorts. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, no, he, like, I don't know if they're cargo shorts, but there's some sort of long sort of shorts, and he, yeah, those are part of his uniform. Yeah, lucky you, our, our shirtless neighbor was, like, the short shorts. Yeah, men really resist the idea of a capri. Oh. <laughs> yeah, why was that never found? I mean, I, I, I had a pair of capris in high school. Um, why was that never really kicked as fashionable, though? Weird. Did you ever, did you ever, uh, like roll up the your the cuffs of your of your pants in like, oh hell yeah in like fourth grade uh much later than fourth grade <laughs> uh, in fact i had a pair of pants recently that i put on and i rolled them up and rhonda's like what are you doing i don't know i'm rolling my pants in a while she's like there's a reason for that <laughs> oh. okay. it's good to have right. these outer voices that keep us in check when we're like why haven't i done this in a bit and then there's like this is why <laughs> <laughs> the reason is it looks really weird oh yeah. <laughs> all right oh that's kind of comfortable <laughs> i yeah um i got rid of like a bunch of t-shirts yeah we've been in this house for as we avoid the topic uh i've been in this house for more than a decade so it's like you know as you like get t-shirts they just get bad at the stack and you don't wear them often and you're like oh this is a good shirt for doing housework and laying tile or driving to the tile store to not get tile or whatever you know and um and so I got rid of like a bunch of shirts. Like, oh, I don't care about the shirts. But then I was like, oh, any shirt that I have like some kind of emotional, like, oh, this would be a nice shirt to keep because it reminds me of my first word camp or, you know, reminds me of blah, blah, blah. So I finished that and I'm like, damn, I still have way too many shirts. Mm. So now I've sort of been like delaying doing something about them. But I think, I think tonight might be the night. I'm going to go in there and say, thank you to the shirts that I don't need to keep and See the that or you yeah. turn them into something like a quilt. You know, I thought if, about that. If you're crafty, but if you're actually not going to do it, then just say goodbye. <laughs> There's someone in the WordPress world that does that. Yep. Yep. It's uh, Andrea someone. Can't remember her last name. I should uh, contact her. I can't remember her last name because her Twitter handle is now Andrea Quilts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she like opened. Is cheese. it Middleton? Yeah, maybe. maybe she stopped up. WordPressing and opened a quilt shop. Cool. I will probably contact her. I today wish I could say, hey, I'd like to send you a bunch of shirts to make a quilt out of. I feel like I say a bunch. Like, I feel like not word pressing. It might be my burnout kicking in. I don't know. She, she'll be like, I'm going to need like nine shirts. I'm like, well, I have three. Maybe you can use the back. <laughs> also, perhaps I should wash this one before I send it in. I, I do not have the, the shirt for my first word camp. I don't think. Uh, Mine was WordCamp Tampa in 2015, maybe? Mine was, Word, mine was WordCamp Utah in 2008 before, uh, before they made it a requirement that WordCamps had to be city names. <laughs> and that was only the second, I believe, WordCamp Utah. So silly, that kind of stuff. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, and now and now they're sort of walking that back anyway. I don't know. We're we're pressed is stupid. Let's move on. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it behind when I move. I don't think I'm gonna get involved in local meetup. Anodyne. Anodyne. Uh, anodyne. It has something to do with air airplanes, right? I feel I I can't get this like anodizing thing out of my head. So. <laughs> It's, it, well, what's the it's, thing that you're thinking of? What does that do? What did you call it? An anodized metal. So, like, you take aluminum and you put it in an anodizing solution with a dye color, and you electrically oh. charge it, and then aluminum picks up the color. So, like, you remember I'm trying to think, like, what it would be? Anytime you bought like an like something that has like aluminum that's like purple or blue or red, like that's anodized. And so, it's, like, just so, so the anodyne is the substance that you dip the aluminum or whatever into and then electrically charge it. I think that maybe, And that's why it's called anodizing because you put it in the anodyne. Yeah, I think maybe anno the prefix means um year. So the process takes a year. Uh why so I think crazy. It has something to do with um Dang. I really feel like I should be able to like parse this out from the word. I don't that think it works. Will. I always <laughs> feel like I can, and it never works. 
I hate to be the naysayer in the group, but like I would never have been able to parse this out from the word. Oh, no, that's fine. We need a naysayer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness my natural qualities are valued. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has to be a realist. Someone has to be the naysayer. It's interesting I said that someone has to be a realist, which means in my mind that I feel like naysaying is like the most real thing, right? Yeah. Which I don't believe at all, I feel like. Well, I used to so. tell that to people, that I wasn't a pessimist. I was a realist. That was like my yeah, my comeback for them being like, you're too negative. <laughs> I don't know where I, I stand now. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like, I feel like, because Aaron falls into that category too, uh, and... The problem with being a realist is it sounds pessimistic a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah. Not that it necessarily is, but like when you're thinking like like a lot of one of the things that she does is <laughs> like uh think about like like two or three steps ahead and or worst case scenarios, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. and when you're doing that, then of course it sounds like you're a pessimist when really you're just preparing yourself for the or the possibility or likelihood that something like that could happen yeah in order to be like ready for it not to be shocked and like oh my god what the hell is going on now yeah. what yeah yeah and um, then when your worst case scenarios actually manifest you're you're valid not excited you're not excited about no, it <laughs> yeah for sure it doesn't sound like a, it isn't not a victory it's like yep yeah, saw that like coming a, oh yeah. of course that's how it worked yeah I do see a lizard crawling up your thing. <laughs> what is that? Is that scream? Is that glass? Scream. Scream. So you could just like Yeah, they, they don't have like suction cup toes. Up. Like they have like little I guess they're tiny fingernails. Like they can't climb glass. Little anodynes. It, 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 little tiny anodynes. Little lizard anodynes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it really a cute word like that? Here's, here's the one I was trying to show you earlier. Can you see that one? The tree? Oh there oh, we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I'm like a jump. <laughs> when that when it gets really warm out later on, um, that lizard will turn like green like a tree. Like, well, How do you get any work done? I would just be staring at lizards all day. I mean, I don't really get a lot of work done if we're being honest these days. <laughs> really distracted with the move thing and stressed out the general state of 2020 as we discussed earlier. So, I mean, I I I. I I'm assuming no one I know or work with is listening to this, but I, I will start a ticket and then I don't care at this point. By the time they hear it, I'll be moved and be back in a better headspace and be more functional. Um, but I'll start a ticket and I'll, I'll like block like an hour to work on a ticket. 25 minutes later, I'll be like, all I did was put it on my calendar that I'm working on it for an hour and I've done nothing for 25 minutes. I haven't even thought about it. Like I've been like just swimming in this mess in my brain. And so I don't, I sort of, I don't clock that time. I just come back around and I, um, I, uh, I clock like a half hour to it, which is realistically what I work on. But that means at the end of the week that my hours are sort of low, but I'm getting the stuff done that needs to be done. And I'm communicating that, hey, I'm not very effective right now. And I will be in July, I promise. Uh, and I do believe that I will be in July, but. Um, I yeah, envy your I confidence. Suck right now. What's that? Yeah. I envy your confidence. I mean, I, I will be back to um, like, pre-house selling productivity. Like, I don't yeah. have a bunch of shit to fix up. I'm not freaking out about, like, oh, how are we going to sign this paperwork without getting, like, a, a, a deadly disease? Like, you know, I mean, there's, like, the little things that are a little... The little things, <laughs> yeah. That are just a little hard to parse these days. Like, I, as we're talking, my realtor sent me a message and, said, and was asking me if I knew um, if we... Like, we have the option we can pay a mobile notary to come and do it at our house, but I'm also like, well, that seems just as dangerous i mean maybe not as yeah. dangerous i don't know like i don't know this person's been to other people's houses and so they'll come to our house and carry the disease or i can go to like a law firm and sit in a conference room and bring my own sanitizing wipes and wear my gloves and mask and i don't know i mean it's 150 bucks less but i you know who knows also this is why i take 25 minutes to get started on the mask. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I'll be productive in July. Yeah, and then, I mean, I, I'm, I'm I officially like out. I'm, I'm officially out until uh, July third. It's been like I, I sort of put more time on the calendar, and and it was approved uh, to take care of Erin now because uh, she nice. broke her knee. Um, 
Happy How are you doing? Fucking 2020 news. Oh, it's fucking great. That's why I yeah. keep dropping the F-bomb. It's fucking yeah. great. Uh, um, yeah. And I don't I mean, know what I'm going to – I don't know what July is going to be like. I, I said I probably – like because she'll be in like physical therapy and shit. Like I don't – I mean I, I – it'll probably be have to be like part-time anyway. Yeah. Um, have you um, – has your family found like a new rhythm? Because I mean, like I'm sure things change with her. Yeah, in this household, yeah. Um, yeah. We've sort of figured something out. Basically, it means camping out in, in our bedroom all day. Um, and then at like three ish, the kids go off to do shit on the computer, and then I work on dinner. And I have like a spreadsheet where I have like, uh, like logging all of the various medications that she's taking because there's like so much shit. Yeah. Um, oh. And we wanted to be careful with them because one of them is is oxycodone, which is an opioid. Um, yeah. So we didn't want to, you know, didn't want to fuck that up. Um, uh, yeah. So. So some of them have to be like antibiotic and stuff, right? Ending soon. Uh, soon surgery, like don't get an infection. And... One of them is uh, a blood thinner, uh, hmm. and that's an injection she needs to give herself, and she's got. I think like eight left and they are twice a day um and then there's like a stool softener that we're not really using and then there's there's a, a tylenol which is ironically um less strong than the tylenol that i have in the bathroom that we got from costco <laughs> um and then one of them is oxy and then one of them was something else that we're not using Oh, it was an anti-nausea thing because uh, one of the drugs they gave her in the hospital made her super sick. Um, so that's oh. another one that we're not using. But we're also like supplementing that with like ibuprofen to sort of like use extra painkillers to like start to cut yeah. back the oxy uh, dosage. So she hasn't been doing oxy during the day for the last few days. Um, and last night was the first night that she only did one dose of oxy. Um, so that's sort of what I did after mine. I like tapered and like but nobody told us that like and we were getting close to the end of her the end of her bottle and we're like we're not gonna have enough to even get you through the night and so um she asked for more and they gave her more even though it says no refills on it and they're like super snotty well not the the pharmacist wasn't super snotty but the insurance said we're not going to pay for more like a refill on this yeah um which is fine because there's only like 30 bucks i was expecting it to be like 150 or something <laughs> Yeah. Like, I, and I was realizing, like, like, okay, so it does. It would require some amount of like, um, of like, uh, research. But like, all I needed, to, all I needed to pick up a prescription for her was, well, I, I guess I, I did need an ID because they did ask for my ID. But when I went in the first time, all they asked me was for was, um, was her birthday, and like, if I had found out her birthday, um, and came yeah. in and knew that she was on that prescription, I could get heavy like opiates for 30 bucks like yeah yeah that's that seems uh but they did ask for my id so maybe they would have asked my for my id yesterday too or the day before um, anyway i'm doing just peachy uh yeah i don't know i'm 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 glad you took the time off that's yeah. Good. yeah yeah well that that seemed like uh not optional um yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try to work on getting into a, a better headspace. We bought, uh, we bought journals, um, yesterday that will arrive tomorrow. And, and we talked about like journaling just to get all this shit out of my head and, and into the world somehow. Um, yeah. Do you like making collages? Is that ever a thing you do? That was a thing I did in like high school. <laughs> <laughs> I find it really calming to just be like, I'm just choosing images and gluing them with a glue stick. I don't know why. Anyway. <laughs> and then you look back on them and like, wow, what the fuck was going on in my head? <laughs> yeah, I basically am like, why were those images appealing to me? What is wrong with me? <laughs> why was that my vision board? <laughs> I think though, I, I think there's a, I think, oh God, I've been listening to, to, uh, never mind. I've been, lost in the sea of like 
mindfulness and quantum physics and i i've been trying mindfulness to mindfulness and years. quantum physics that's that's a doozy yeah that's, that's well they relate because things like quantum entanglement and i mean there's there's shit happening that like we scientifically can kind of observe and say there's something there i don't know what it is and there's like my reality and your i don't i don't this could be like 17 hours of Gary Vanderbilt. <laughs> Is this like I, when my partner mentions that we're in a simulation? <laughs> well, I, well, so I, uh, I, had, I had a deep dive on that uh, a couple nights ago and convinced myself that we're not. And I'm struggling now to figure out a concise way to present why I'm convinced we're not in a simulation. Um, sure you like taking notes. I picture you like sitting your family down in like a living room and being like, I have a presentation. I want you all to pay attention for the next 15 minutes. Here's the way it works. Like I, I kind of get my PowerPoint. Like, you know, so obviously like I have my, my hour long ticket at work and instead of working on that, I space out for 25 minutes. 10 of that might turn into like this existential dread of like what defines Gary is, well, you know, in Jacksonville, these things I'm involved in and these people that I know and who I am and what I'm surrounded by and proximity to this and that. And I start thinking about who is Gary in North Carolina. Mm. Uh, and there's, uh, there's two, there's, there's the excitement of like, I can be any Gary I want. Right. Um, and there's the fear of like, I can be any Gary I want. And um, like, don't fuck it up. Like, you know, like that's the, that's the thing. So it's both a gift and uh and uh, and it's it's absolutely frightening. And uh, I'm trying to figure out how I can appreciate both parts of it. Um, That's interesting uh, because, like, I can definitely relate to the fact that, like, when I lived in the Bay Area, Bay Area Chris was a different Chris than, like, when I was in college Chris. And college Chris was also a different person than, like, Utah Chris. Like, yeah. And, and I sort of see it as like an opportunity to say, um, like, set aside the things that are not clearly things that I define as good, you know, there are things that are mostly good or like, like I can, I can start very simply and not be involved in anything locally and, and focus on just being present with my family and figuring out what that looks like, you know, in a new place. And, and, you know, that'll lead somewhere or it won't. And when I feel like, you know, that's, that's stable and I've had enough, then I can start, you know, figuring out what it is in that area that, that speaks to me. But, uh, but then the fear that comes with that is like, what, it, you know, there's, I'm not a super social person, but I definitely have been able to tell during isolation you know that that i miss the camaraderie of uh you know in-person group stuff so um so am i going to let myself fall into like a, a depressive state as i you know try and refactor these other things so there i mean it's anyway that's why i'm reading about quantum physics obviously obviously as you do as uh, you do well we have we're past the time where we need a topic uh, or the need a, the, the answer to the topic. Uh, we, oh. we Anodyne. dodged uh, very well uh, talking about the topic. What is anodyne? Uh, it can be two things, but mainly it's a drug that allays pain or alleviates okay. pain. Okay. So the anodyne properties of certain drugs. So, All right. but it can also be used to be like, not likely to offend or arouse tensions or like be controversial or like so like a like conversation mu music like a conversation conversations can be anodyne filler. certain music oh. can be anodyne really non provoke like non provoking so 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 it's a it's a painkiller of all types it's a painkiller yeah. <laughs> for actual pain but it's also a painkiller to like avoid confrontation avoid any sort of <laughs> conflict or like conversely like oh that whatever that song was very not anodyne for the situation or whatever it is i don't know yeah anyway my sister um when like i don't know i think we do we no we haven't met in a couple weeks i think when we last chatted jacksonville was like trying to land the republican national convention yeah and um, then you did yes so that's a thing 
and my yeah. sister sent me a message and is like, "Hey, can I come stay with you that week?" I'm like, absolutely. no. <laughs> well, no, she's in she's in Jacksonville. She's weekend in North Carolina. Oh, okay. She'll be leaving town. She'll Sorry, be leaving that town. Time. Yeah, okay, right, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, that's why she'll be coming to visit because she right because she doesn't want to be in town. Yeah. Oh, okay. Flip. <laughs> Plot twist. Yeah. yeah, sorry. In my head, I was already there. But yeah, yeah. So it'll be it'll be the end of August, and so we'll be gone, and so she will uh, live for a while. I'm pretty excited about it. That's cool. Yeah. 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 So that uh, I think a couple of weeks ago, a couple of episodes ago, I talked about uh, the the protest against uh, COVID restrictions concert that wasn't going to happen because it was moved. So it got so it got moved, and then uh, the update to that story was it got moved again or got canceled again. They were going to uh, the the judge in that county filed a restraining order uh, to prevent them from ha- holding the event. So then they moved it again to like uh, Cedar City, which is where we have uh, the Utah Shakespeare Festival. And Cedar City was like, yes, we're happy to have this thing. Uh, and they, it happened. Yeah, it definitely happened. There's lots of people there. There's like a couple thousand, I think. And then hardly any of them had masks and it was great. And it's great. And numbers in Utah are going up and it's fan fucking fantastic because 2020 is awesome. Jacksonville is sort of weird because in an effort to land the RNC, of course, restrictions were reduced so that they can have a maskless convention. Oh, and so restaurants have opened with social distancing in effect. And you can imagine how well that works at a bar on the weekends. And so today being Thursday, this past weekend, there was like rumblings about like, oh, someone with COVID was at this bar at the beach. Yeah. And, uh, and since then, there have probably been a dozen restaurants that have uh, announced that, oh, we had staff that tested positive, so we'll be closed until further notice. Um, or restaurants that are closed for deep cleaning, though we haven't had anyone test positive. We have. And so... Uh... We had a couple meat packing plants that uh, uh, that tested positive, like with a, like mini outbreaks. Yeah. And while Rhonda was gone last weekend, oh, I don't know if yeah, she took like she had to take a like last minute trip to North Carolina last week, and so I only had Charlotte, the youngest, with me, and I'm like, I'm not gonna cook for Charlotte and I. So I of course did some uh, Grubhub or whichever app had the, the cheapest discount or whatever. And uh, one of the restaurants I ordered from was the beach. So I'm going, oh, good. Like, I mean, it's probably fine. It probably is. Probably is. They're still open. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, food probably doesn't have stuff. Probably. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's in someone's car. Yeah, you know, but then somebody's people, touching it you know? and they're doing all the stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I was careful. I mean, I brought it in the house and then washed my hands. And I you yeah. know, I, was, I mean, but still, you, you can't get that thought out of your head. You right. can't just be like, yeah. oh, it's no, fine. we've. We've been doing that for a while, but you know, uh, since Erin was uh, checked into the hospital, she is negative for COVID, so that's a thing. Someone told me that like they basically like put a swab in your nose and like scratch the back of your brain. Is that how she described it? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that sounds fantastic. I mean, yeah, something I definitely want to sign up for. Yeah. Oh. My mom is uh, getting her knee replaced this week, and she had to do a pre a COVID test and she was just like wish me luck and I was like mom you've had kids like this will be fine and she was just like no <laughs> she's like, she's like that was not pleasant <laughs> so she's getting a knee replacement like I know the answer but I have to ask is there by any chance like bionic well she already got her hip replaced so, okay. so she's already she's, part robot she's getting there um yeah. But I mean, like, is it just like a, a passive, like, mechanical device, or are yeah. there like electronics and stuff? No. Okay. I knew the answer. I just had to ask. I was hopeful. I was hoping I your mean, mom was gonna be like. Not that I know of, but like, would she tell me? Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter. We will read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.